I think we can do this. This is about still life. Hey viewers, did you know that you can write us an email and tell us what you want to learn? Just like Stephen here. Stephen sent us an email saying that, Hey Andrew, I'm a portrait photographer and I stopped shooting for a while because of the pandemic and I want to shoot something at home but I have very little knowledge on product or still life photography. Can you show us how we can take beautiful pictures like this? This is a photo that he found on the internet. So viewers, today we're going to learn the basic knowledge of how you can take still life like this with simple lighting. So viewers, let's get inspired by this photo. We're not going to do five wine glass, but I'm going to show you better how you can use one or two and get a different result. What makes this photo really interesting is that fine, exquisite, very thin rim light coming from the back. And you have to light up from the back because anything that's transparent needs to be backlit or bottom lit. And that's it. If you look at this photo, you have one of the wine glass filled with wine, but it's not completely lit up. As you can see, it's only the bottom part. I'm not saying that this photo is not good. I'm simply saying that with our shot, we're going to do it slightly different and perhaps even more light on the wine later on. But let's light up the wine glass exquisitely first. Put your wine glass on a stool like so. And what I'm introducing now at about a meter away from the glass, behind the glass, that's where the camera is going to be. You are standing exactly where the camera will be. The glass there, and I'm putting a studio flash here. It doesn't need to be a studio flash. I'm just using one. You can use a hot shoe flash or you can use an LED light. Position it to light up the glass this way, right? Because anything that's transparent should be lit up from the back or backlit. True, but if you do so, you're going to see the flash. Here's what you do. Take the flash and point it to the wall behind you, preferably a white wall. I know, even though you want a black background. Let me show you how you get that black background. Get a light stand or a clothes hanger like this. Put it in between the wine glass and the light that you set up. I'm using a clothes hanger for a specific reason. Number one, many of you are still working from home. Number two, almost everybody have this kind of towel or clothes hanger. Let me show you how you add black to this now. And here's how you get black as a background now. Get a black paper like this preferably a mounting board black on one side white on the other and just between the light and the wine glass on the clothes hanger or tower rack clip this here exactly covering the wine glass from the light source at the back so what's left is what power to set on this flash here well easy look at the photo you want completely black at the background and you only see a wide rim of outline on the wine glass which means that you're shooting with a high air value, low ISO, shutter speed at 1 over 200 at the brink of breaking speed. You must be wondering how I know this because you want everything black. One way you can get the camera completely dark is to use a high air value. I'm going to shoot at f16 and how you get the camera darker? Then? Use an ISO that is low, about an ISO 100. And then finally, shutter speed as high as you can get because you still want to trigger this flash remotely. So that will give us an idea what to set for this flash. Well, when you turn this on, you will know that you can go minimal power, which I doubt will work. Or I'm going to set it to half. Maximum may be a bit too much. So between half and maximum. I'm just taking a jab here. I rarely use this flash these days. So let's go to the front and go through the camera settings. Whenever I'm shooting a still life like this, my favorite lens has to be the 15 millimeter lens. This is the f1.8 version. So I'm slapping on a close-up filter. A close-up filter is a piece of glass that you can screw on to the front of your lens that will allow you to shoot closer. This will make your subject look bigger. And that's it. Turn my camera to manual mode. You can use aperture priority, but I'm using manual mode on this. Set my F value to F16, my ISO to 100, and shutter speed to 200. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to mount this on a tripod. One of the best, best practices of shooting still life is to have a tripod. That way, you can set this on a timer, move away so that you don't get reflection on the still life that you're shooting. Almost everything gives reflection, even though an apple. 
we're going to install a hot shoe flash or a radio trigger so that we can trigger the flash at the back and I have a habit of pointing this away so that you don't get a specular highlight turn on this hot shoe flash keep the power to minimal the logic is this this should be on manual mode at the lowest possible power because you want to trigger that let me show you what I mean so when I test fire this flash here that went off so with this now I can focus with my timer and take a shot good we are almost perfect here I can see a few problem the outline is beautiful but the bottom of the wine glass has no light hmm so how do we fix this why not you just get another similar size wine glass and do this how do you make the flash not so hard simple you can open up the zoom a little bit the zoom was at 70 millimeter I'm gonna bring this to 28 and slap on a diffusion dome to this place it exactly the same still notice the angle I'm just pointing up a little bit don't do this this may create a lot of specular highlight just point it up a little bit a shy away from the glass and you notice I'm not even on timer now and bravo to my favorite filming director Yi Chong that came up with these ideas you may want to check out this episode where I use one light a down light on a glass to get this perfume bottle looking good in one of my live stream session not too long ago check out that episode and only now you're ready to pour in your red wine so I made it more red and a smaller spoon now remember in the original photo there wasn't that much of red wine in there so we're gonna do the same just a little bit at the bottom please don't splash I'm trying to get rid of the bubbles here and add a big soft light when you add a big light like this which is a soft box so you notice that it has a little bit of a clamshell effect clamshell kind of like a clam so we have the light facing this way but it's bigger now we use a soft box to make it softer this light that we have down here would light up the top portion of the wine let's see what we get now so this is how our final lighting setup look like white wall a meter away that's our light pointing to the white wall and then we have this black mounting card facing to the wine glass clipped on a clothes hanger right at the bottom we have a big soft box which is angled upward the bottom light would light up the top part of the wine this is solely to light up the wine and we remove the hot shoe flash here not necessary anymore and then we have the wine glass stacked on top upside down of each other and then finally the camera and our flash here is to trigger both the flashes and the final settings on our camera the ISO is 100 shutter speed 1 over 200 and an f14 because when we added the light we have to make it a little bit brighter to show and apart from that if you're shooting JPEG you might want to make the contrast higher so that our black is blacker and then increase the saturation so this is what I want you to try out now your assignment or homework is that apart from just adding the softbox down here as you can see we only have light at the top part of the wine why not you get another softbox which I'm not gonna do it would be fun to see you executing this and showing and sharing with us the result a true clamshell lighting with another softbox up here so it's gonna have one for the bottom and one for the top I look forward to see your photos so I hope you enjoyed this project as much as I did I like shooting still life a lot because all I need is a little bit of space and the ability to test my knowledge on lighting if the lighting is good and you understand how light behaves in photography shots like this can really be easy if you don't you're gonna end up with a lot of flashes and a lot of lag and a lot of wrong moves 
If you like lighting and want to learn more about lighting, I compel you to head on to my e-learning website here. Look at our e-learning section and check out our e-learning in flash photography. Flash photography course that you have here is the most basic foundation that will open the doors for you to do more shots that involve spectacular lighting. So learn the basic first with the e-learning of flash photography. And if you enjoy still life as much as I do, Check out our e-learning in product photography where you learn how to take simple shots of products and still life and turn them looking exquisite. Even better, we are having our promo on the All Access account. If you subscribe to the All Access account instead of this price, and this is for the whole year, and if you have the All Access account, you have full access to all our e-learning courses, including our premium courses. So it's one of the best deals that you can get on our e-learning website. Or if you want to save cost and still learn a lot, check out our premium courses where we have hundreds of multi-genre photography tutorials that goes through the basic of cameras, the settings, compositions, lighting, stock photos, and even commercial product photography. And I hope you head onto our website now and support our efforts so that we can continuously make videos like this on YouTube. I'll see you soon.